Oh yeah, yeah, thirty bucks. You see. Okay. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so um, I got a uh, kind of interesting. I got a wine uh, off of Underground Cellar. Oh, finally, Underground Cellar wine. Yeah, um, and it was kind of weird because I, I bought this a while ago, and somehow when I'm looking at the order, in, I'm looking at the order um, details. And it says the wine's valued at thirty dollars, but it says I didn't pay anything for the wine, so I don't know. I don't know if this was like wine I got substituted for something because sometimes when you buy, and, and this ha can happen with any online retailer, they you buy wines from them and maybe their supplier didn't actually have all the wine to them yet, or maybe they oversold it, or something happened to this whatever. And I don't know if this was it because it was three wines in this in this order, and all of them showed to be zero dollars that I paid for. So I don't know if this was a replacement for something else of an equal value, or I don't remember getting any freebies of wine from Underground Cellar, but on their website it said it was it's a $30. Now I found another website that said it was only like $11. I don't know if it's the exact same wine, but I thought it is. But um, this is actually, uh, believe it or not, um, so Bronco Wine Company, so if you've never heard of them, You've probably heard a lot of, you probably have heard of their brands. They are definitely a, they're not large like Constellation or, or, or Treasury Wine Estates, but they're definitely a, a large high volume wine company. They have multiple labels out there, various price points in, in their wine portfolio. Um, so uh, uh, this happens to be one of them. This is actually a rosé from France. So it's the Côtes de Provence. Uh, actually it's a collection de Anges, A-N-G-E-S, uh, is it Côte de Provence, so that's the, it's from Provence, it's a rosé. Um, like I said, it, it, it lists for $30. Uh, it is a uh, rosé of a combination, a blend of 55% Grenache, 30% Cinso, 15% Syrah. I forgot the uh, 2016 vintage, so definitely uh, in, the, in the right time to drink it right now. Uh, the vineyard is located in southern France on three departments, Var, Bouchers, Durone, and the Alps Maritimes. Um, let's see. It says to drink to drink in its first year to appreciate all its aromatic fresh, uh, freshness. So I'm a couple years late to the party. Um, so you can tell I probably bought this thing like three years ago or two years ago. And because underground cellar, I kind of let my wine sit there because it's like a f not quite unlimited storage, cloud storage. But when I got that thing, I was like, give me it all. I, have, I had like six more bottles I, I didn't have them send because uh, I'm waiting to build a case for that because it's free shipping. Um, anyway, so I'm excited to try this. Uh, I love rosé. Um, and it doesn't say anything about, about how dry it is, but... Typically, French rosés are dry. All right. Okay. Oh, I love when it, I love when the needle easily goes in and out of the cork. I hate when it's like. All right. So. Um, it's a little cloudy, but it's from the freaking gas. So, um, but it looked kind of murky. I did have like an unfiltered Pinot Noir from Germany a couple nights ago. That was pretty cool. Um, but this is definitely not gonna be an unfiltered wine. Uh, but, a, a, you know, a salmon-ish color, very light salmon color. So not, not like pink, pink or orange or like, yeah, but a little salmon on that. So on the nose, um, I get a touch of strawberry, um, which is very common with rosés of all kinds. A um, little red apple on it. A touch of a touch of spices. Um, a little potpourri to it. Like many rosés, it's, it's a fairly pretty nose. 
and it's also light. It's not very, it's not like a, a high high intensity. It's a fairly medium minus, honestly. I mean, it's not too terribly cold. I mean, it's sh it should be a pretty good drinking temperature. Yeah, that's about it. I, yeah, it's just right to the palate. Tastes like rosé. But it's, it's definitely um, really refreshing, very acidic, so sharp. Um, and, and but it's, it's got a touch of bitterness, like not like bad bitter, but like you can, like you bit into that red apple, like you can taste the apple skin, right? Um, the strawberry is tart; it's not a fresh strawberry. Okay, um, those are like the two overriding, like fruit components I get on it. I really don't get the stereotypical watermelon, and I just had some watermelon a couple hours ago, so that that flavor is very fresh in my mind. So, um, but it's it's very dry. It's 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 almost herbal, mineral, um, earthy. Uh, so there's like so that, that kind of contributes to that that sensation of bitterness. So it's not like this fresh fruity rosé. It's like it's a more serious. You know what I mean? It's like. I'm, Rose, I'm French Rosé, darn it. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, this is, a, this is a style of Rosé that I particularly enjoy. But at the same time, it's not an overly complex Rosé. It's So, I mean, 30 bucks for a Rosé. I kind of was expecting maybe a little bit more complexity out of it. Maybe I'm just not catching it. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking, overthinking it. But I mean, as as a, so as a general feeling, without trying to like break down every little nuance, it's got a very pleasant aroma. It's not it's not really intense. It's pretty light, um, delicate almost. Um, but it's got a very pleasant aroma on the palate. It's it's a uh, it's a little earthier than maybe some other rosés that you might have had. Um, this is something that I probably wouldn't like just sit out on a patio and drink, I would probably want to have some kind of food with it, okay? Um, we, we were talking like entrees, like I don't eat seafood, but this, you know, I see this with some, you know, type of seafood with maybe like a, or something, or maybe like a, a filet with like a mushroom sauce. I don't like mushrooms, but like the earthiness, um, something like that, some, some uh, heartier cheeses, I mean, nothing like big on it, but you know, cheeses that, that um, would work well on the palate with this, so a little bit more bitter on the cheese, not like sweet necessarily. Um, I probably wouldn't be going overboard on fruit with it, but you could have something a little more savory with, with this type of stuff. You know, you could definitely do a meat and cheese board, a little charcuterie type of thing, um, rather than like a fruit plate. I can see even doing something like like little, little crudite, so it's just a fancy word for veg, veggie plate, you know, like you know, celery carrot type thing, you know, a little crudite. I can see doing that. Salad, yeah, have a little salad with this. With uh, but you have to have the right type of dressing. You get like a champagne dressing. Um, you could have maybe a vinaigrette. I wouldn't like go like ranch dressing or anything like that, but you know, a lighter dressing. So yeah, there we can see that. What do they say on here? Perfume of acidulous fruits. Never heard of that term. Such as black currant berries, huh? Lemon, mineral notes that bring a lot of freshness. That's the nose. Beautiful aromatic intensity on the palate. This wine reveals explosive flavors. And a beautiful freshness with this with this fruity and I've never heard of acid to whatever blah blah blah. 
So they're, they're really being very vague on the actual flavors. And like I said, it's, it's got a couple things in there, but it's more of a sensation. Um, appreciate it as an aperitif. Uh, our company of shellfish, seafood, fish and sauce, fresh salads, aha, even chocolate mignardises. Never heard of those, they sound good. All right, I can see that. But um, you know, maybe I waited a little too long to drink this. Uh, maybe it will be a little bit fresher if I drank it a couple years ago or even last year. But I mean, I would say like if you see this, maybe not the 16 out in the market, um, and you want something that's got a little more, you know, oomph to it than like a like a regular entry level uh, rosé. Sure, check it out. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. As always, click the links above to friend me up. You click the links below to uh, find out more about this wine. Um, and you can throw me some ducats uh, if you'd like, that'd be helpful. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.